Dear YouTubers, welcome to Real Turkey channel. This is Attila Yaşlara, this time appearing solo. To tell you a mafia story, it's probably not as good as Godfather, because Mario Puzo was an excellent author, but this is probably real, or at least has elements of reality. And it involves allegations by this gentleman, Mr. Sedat Peker, a typical, honorable, family-loving, charity-loving mafia boss. By the way, this is not an accusation. He says he's a mafia boss. He's proud of it. And uh, he has been broadcasting a series of YouTube videos which are drawing outstanding, incredible audiences. This guy has killed me, man. I mean, already I'm suffering from low traffic. And this guy doesn't accept advertising. And look at his stats here. Just a second. This is the cover of one YouTube video. If you pay close attention, you can see the channel name. But if you just, you, you know, write Sedat Pekar. <laughs> look, look at my older brother. Look, look at Godfather here. And do you see the, the traffic here? This particular video, the eighth installment, has already attracted more than 10 million viewers. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm just awestruck. This is, when I grow up, I want to be like Sedat Pekar. I mean, that doesn't mean I want to kneecap people and, you know, beat them with iron pipes and stuff, uh, but I uh, definitely... Uh, when I have an audience of 10 million or so for at least one of my videos before I die. Maybe retelling his story uh, would be a good start on the path to Sedat Pekerdom, uh, the new term for being a YouTube phenomenon in Turkey. Now, before I start telling this tale, I should make it clear, just to ease my conscience, that these are allegations. They seem to dovetail very nicely with the observed events, but as many of you know, correlation is not causation. So everything he says, every accusation he hurls at Mr. A or Mrs. B need to be proven in a court of law. By the way, this is, I need to center this, yeah. Now I look good. Now, the only reason I do these YouTube videos is to get a chance to look at my gorgeous self for 20 minutes or so. Anyhow, well, let's introduce Mr. Sedat Pekar, uh, who has gained some weight. But he has been around since 1990s and just um, the typical uh, young boy from the ghetto getting into the crime business and rising slowly story. Uh, he has been, you know, into uh, extortion, uh, uh, causing bodily injury with intent to harm or whatever the crime is. Uh, he has done time in prison for, uh, he was sentenced to seven years, but I think after seven, four years, his sentence was commuted. Uh, he's also seriously into charity. He has received several awards for his Good Samaritan deeds. The most important point is Mr. Sadat Pekar is an avid fan of our President Erdogan. In the past, he threatened critics of Mr. Erdogan with massive bloodshed. And uh, he has always uh, organized rallies for the re-election of Mr. President Erdogan. And if you look at his YouTube channels, in the past, he's not new to YouTube. He has done shorter videos in the past, embellishing his good deeds and his philanthropist side. But he has always been on the side of uh, Mr. Erdogan. This is why it was sort of strange that he decided to leave Turkey in 2019 to get a college diploma for Macedonia. He stayed there for a while. We didn't hear much from him. Then suddenly, a couple of months ago, his crime gang 
was busted throughout Turkey. I think uh, police netted 65 subjects in something like 18 cities. So the guy has franchised, man. I mean, he was present everywhere. You know, it's like a bank. It's always near you in your neighborhood. If you need to say that Pekyar to break someone's thumbs uh, or to, you know, protect your store against other uh, gangsters, Pekyar was there for you. And then um, uh, the police raided his house, his home at dawn, which is, by the way, a tradition in Turkey. Uh, no matter what the uh, suspicion is, you always raid at dawn. That's, that's what you do. And he claims that uh, his wife and his daughter were manhandled. Uh, and that's... You know, whether you are a criminal gang leader or just an ordinary citizen, that for most Turks, that's the ultimate insult. Uh, and this is why he says he decided uh, to come out of his closet, I suppose. That's the best word. And to explain everything he knows about the shenanigans that uh, went on in AKP. What are these shenanigans? Let's look at these allegations. Well, and I will introduce all these characters, but front, front bench politicians in AKP collude with, with Mafia and Gladio. There are so many names involved there. I'll introduce the leading antagonist here, Interior Minister Mr. Suleyman Soylu, who is the main target of Sedat Peker, but there are several names being dropped. Several AKP members have committed crimes like rape, drug trafficking, interfering with the judiciary or, or blocking a police probe, receiving kickbacks, and political assassinations going back to 2000. Next, AKP members and mafia have conspired to expropriate property from private businesses. For instance, a marina, which is then used for transshipping cocaine coming from Latin America on its way to Mideast. The son of a former PM, Mr. Binali Yildirim, who also ran for the municipality of Istanbul and lost to Ekrem Imamoglu. Mr. Erkam Yildirim is running a narco ring. Uh, let me uh, Erdogan sent weapons to fundamentalist Al Nasra. Uh, they change names every month, so I don't know what they are called right now in contravention of international treaties. And Erdogan ordered harassment and beatings of dissident journalists. So, what are we going to do in this video? Very simple. Uh, we're going to do a deep dive into these allegations. And uh, then we're going to try to understand uh, why Sedat Peker has found the courage to revolt against his former boss and benefactor. How come his videos are not taken off YouTube? The firestorm, his allegations have started in Turkish politics. And finally, where is this game going? Okay, now these are really serious allegations uh, and the main culprit here, the, the evil character, so to say, that seems to be organizing most of these is our interior minister, Mr. Suleyman Soylu. He is accused in these videos of conspiring with the Mafia, uh, as well as uh, ordering the police to cover up some investigations against AKP members. More interestingly, Sedat Peker claims Suleyman Soylu has police eavesdrop on his rivals in AKP, such as 
the presidential spokesperson, Mr. Ibrahim Kalin. And he says, Süleyman Soylu is actually backstabbing President Erdogan because his goal is to become the next president of Turkey. Süleyman Soylu was asked to resign by the opposition, but he refused simply because he is supported by Erdogan's ally, Mr. Bacheli, who is the chairman of Nationalist MHP party. The next actor in this criminal series is Mr. Mehmet Agar, former chief of police and minister of interior in 1990s, also accused of a series of extrajudicial killings of Kurdish businesses and Kurdish civilians accused of uh, being sympathizers of PKK. None of this have been proven in a court of law, but he has been charged and tried and acquitted, but an upper court has turned over the acquittal, so he's going to be tried again. Uh, Mr. Sedat Peker says Agar, whose son is, by the way, an AKP deputy, a member of the parliament, and Soylu are in deep competition at two dimensions. First of all, for influence in the party for the period after Erdogan. And secondly, uh, they are competing for the loot uh, that AKP seems to be so good at. You know, they're fighting over the spoils of the state as well as using or leveraging state power to simply confiscate and expropriate property from innocent business people. And Sedat Peker provides several examples of such events. It's amazing. I mean, I mentioned the marina, which Mehmet uh, R took over, but there is also, a, you know, a meatball shop, a meatball restaurant, Turks love meatballs, called Köfte. We love them as much as the Swedes. Essentially, the way I figure these out is that, assuming what Sedat Peker says is true, is that any business where tax evasion is easy, where there is a lot of cash flow uh, without clients asking for tax receipts, uh, and where the proprietor is not protected by a higher name in AKP, is a potential target. Uh, the more important allegation, of course, is about this boy with a positive body image. His name is Erkam Yildirim. He is the son of the gentleman in the middle, Mr. Binali Yildirim, a very close confidant of President Erdogan. Mr. Binali Yildirim served as Prime Minister, as Transport Minister, as the Speaker of the Parliament, and he lost the, the mayor's race in Istanbul against Ekrem Mamoğlu. Serhat Peker says that this robust, rotund, robust, whatever, gentleman has traveled to Venezuela to arrange cocaine to be brought from Peru and Colombia or, or Colombia and then to be transshipped to Turkey. Mr. Binali Yildirim says his son went there for humanitarian purposes uh, to bring with him uh, masks and testing kits for COVID-19. According to custom records, Mr. Erkam Yildirim has been to Venezuela at a time when Venezuela was reporting only 30, day, 30 cases a day and his luggage did not contain any masks or testing kits. One of the most uh, important allegations is about this group, Sadat, formed by a former general, an Islamist general, a rarity in Turkish military forces. It's essentially a, 
you know, uh, private army like um, the Wagner Group in Russia or Blackwater in the United States. I hope I'm not misspelling the name. Uh, who has uh, essentially done mercenary work where uh, Turkish military force uh, shouldn't be because of international conventions or because of our quote-unquote friendly relations with the nation involved. But they are active in Azerbaijan, Libya, and Syria, it is believed. His accusation, and that's really a matter for the International Criminal Court, is that Mr. Uh, Erdogan has dispatched large quantities of weapons to Al-Nusra, which is defending uh, the Idlib province of Syria against Assad's onslaught. But it's also extremely fundamentalist uh, and has connections to Al-Qaeda. So there are a series of allegations here. Uh, let's go over them once again, because this is very important. Uh, some of them involve crimes uh, that are specific to Turkey and that can only be tried in Turkish courts. But others, such as uh, narco-trafficking, is an international crime. And certainly, the sums involved, according to independent sources, warrant international attention to Turkey's uh, uh, involvement in the, tra in the transatlantic drug trafficking. Uh, I have read articles which claim that the market value of coke shipped from Latin America to Turkey then onto Middle East and to a lesser, lesser extent Europe is worth uh, 15 to 25 billion dollars a year. Add on top of it the roughly 10 billion dollars of heroin shipped from Afghanistan through Turkey to Europe and God, you're talking about 40 billion, 30 to 40 billion dollars of footloose money circulating the global financial system. The second, of course, is that Erdogan has uh, supplied a fundamentalist organization in Syria, declared a terror organization by US, United Nations, and, Syria, and, and, and Russia in contravention of international treaties. All of these suggest to me that when Mr. Sadat finishes his long visual tirade with a ninth video, season closer, next week, where he shall explain his relationship with Mr. Erdogan, for good or bad, I really don't know, uh, the Turkey will have further problems vis-a-vis -vis the international community. As I've said, uh, Turkish private entities cooperating with uh, Syria Al-Qaeda extensions in terms of oil smuggling, uh, human trafficking, etc. have been aired before, but there has been no conclusive proof. These weapons transfers, obviously, if CIA were to get Sedat Pekar, who is currently in Abu Dhabi or Dubai, no one knows, is going to be uh, a different matter. And secondly, as I've said, uh, this drug business is extremely serious because if you don't check these things, they keep growing. And Turkey becomes a center, a, a tax heaven, a, a money laundering heaven, which harms not only the Turkish citizenry in the sense that drug trafficking always pulls crime behind it, but also because Turkey is, through Turkey, very large sums of unidentified money is injected into the global financial system, which can be used for arms trafficking, prostitution, terror, financing, etc., etc. 
So even if Sedat Peker shuts up at some point, I don't think the reverberations will die off very quickly. So this is the first angle of Sedat Pekar's revelations. I am fairly certain that, uh, you know, Mossad, CIA, uh, British Intelligence Agency will send agents to interview him to see if there is any truthfulness to his claims. I mean, I want to repeat once again, he may be completely making the stories up. Uh, but uh, the drug trafficking figures that I cited a few minutes ago have been obtained from international sources I consider reliable and have also been mentioned in the latest report by the European Parliament regarding Turkey. So I think uh, there is some uh, grain of truth to these. Coming to the, uh, let me add, I mean, you might know from my previous videos, such as the countdown with the United States, Turkey is already under Katsa sanctions. And Mr. President Erdogan and American President Joe Biden are meeting on 14th of June in Brussels for the NATO summit. Uh, Turkey and United States can't agree on Russian-made S-400s, on a Muslim pastor, Fethullah Gülen, who resides in Pennsylvania, but is accused of organizing the 2016 abortive coup, as well as other issues. If Biden wishes to have leverage on Mr. Erdogan, he could use Serhat Pekar, I suppose, assuming some of what Mr. Pekar states is true. <coughs> Let's move on to the Turkish uh, dimension of these of these allegations. Here, I'm going to put post this under the uh, under this video as well. These are all English sources, and I'm going to keep it on the screen for a few seconds so that if you're interested, you can jot down the links. All of these links will be alive. So far, three polls have been conducted in Turkey asking whether uh, people consider Sedat Peker a reliable witness of the recent past or are watching him as they watch a criminal miniseries. With different proportions, all three surveys found that a majority of respondents do consider Sedat Peker a credible witness. In other words, people may not be fully convinced that he's saying the whole truth and the full truth only, but certainly they are willing to investigate this or even worse for AKP and Mr. Erdogan. Once they watch these videos, they are interested in commentary uh, an analysis of his allegations in the alternative media. That's bad news for Mr. Erdogan. Already his approval rating is below 40% and in the polls that have been conducted since the beginning of the year, he seems to be losing ground each month steadily and in the April-May string of polls uh, in one-on-one -on -one horse races, he's losing to at least three potential candidates, two CHP mayors and the chairwoman of E-Party, Mrs. Meral Akshener. So the fact that so many people are interested in Sedat Pekar's story is bad news for him. Uh, also bad news for him is the revelation that AKP may not be the monolithic completely loyal army that follows Erdogan wherever he wishes to go. That aspect of Sedat Pekar has also drawn the attention of the opposition. Essentially, Sedat Pekar says that AKP is no longer a single party, but a coalition of financial interests 
who are only together because they want to share the state loot, the rent. But they are also backstabbing each other and fighting like cats and dogs because they believe that Erdogan is past his prime, past his due date, <laughs> as they sell in the supermarket, as they say in the supermarket, and they are all vying for influence to appoint the next leader after Mr. Erdogan. Clearly, the third point, distilling Sedat Peker's, excuse me, let me just change this, I think it's, the third point, distilling Sedat Peker's uh, conversations, is that AKP is nose deep in corruption. That not only does it favor certain big construction companies and family members, in big tenders, that's cronyism and nepotism. But it has also expanded its influence on the economy by using mafia and former members of the army. We call them Gladio in Turkey, an Italian word that is again from 1990s. To loot more property and wealth and to use political assassinations if necessary. In one telling incident, Sedat Peker claims he has organized the beating of at least two well-read Hurriyet daily newspaper journalists to intimidate the owner of uh, the media empire, Mr. Aydin Dogan, to sell uh, to a pro-AKP businessman called uh, Mr. Demirören. And indeed, Aydin Dogan finally relented uh, under under these attacks and sold to the Demirören family. Hurriyet is no longer a dissident or independent newspaper. It's part of the pro-AKP press. So, at a time when power, official power rate in Turkey is 22% and 25% of the workforce is unemployed using the broad measure, the accusation that a large number of AKP members are enriching themselves at the expense of the civilians and even, you know, pro-AKP business people is damning, is damning for Mr. Erdogan. So, I tend to concur with the view that even if Mr. Sedat Peker finishes the first season, he shall be encouraged to do a second season because he seems to know more than he keeps saying. He may be engaged or incentivized by foreign agents who have uh, a desire to see Mr. Erdogan gone, or he may be actually encouraged or enabled by Mr. Erdogan's domestic rivals. <coughs> or he may be in collusion with Mr. Erdogan because one of the easiest things that the government can do in Turkey is order YouTube to take the content off air, but Mr. Erdogan hasn't resorted to that course. Neither has he really defended Suleyman Soylu uh, 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 with the usual spirit that he attends to this kind of businesses. It was very half-hearted. Maybe he wants Soylu gone because he's more of an MHP member than than an AKP member. But no matter how you look at it, uh, these allegations have compounded Mr. Erdogan's popularity problem and uh, also add to the thesis that I and my guests, check our videos below, Turkey's political uh, problems, uh, that uh, AKP is melting at the core that if the current economic pressures continue or COVID-19 can't be suppressed this year, uh, AKP parliamentary parliamentarians can switch to other parties forcing early elections. I think the most important aspect of these allegations that has been missed by both Turkish and international media is that they prove Turkey can never develop as a nation 
or increase its growth rate to, to the extent that it will catch up with even the poorest EU members. The reason being, you need institutions like an independent judiciary, independent regulatory authorities, an effective and independent police force, prosecutors, etc. to make sure that the free market economy works, that it doesn't turn into the wild, wild west. And what Sedat Peker says is that all these institutions have actually collapsed. Their authority have been sucked off them by Mr. Erdogan's presidency. And Mr. Erdogan doesn't do a good job in terms of discharging the duties that had once been assumed by these institutions. It's this complete institutional collapse that will stymie Turkey's efforts to grow. And that's a lesson to Mr. Erdogan, who seems to be hoping that once the COVID-19 epidemic is over, Turkish economy will recover and grow very fast so that he can win the next scheduled elections in 2023. He won't, because he and his desire to gather all the power of the state in his person has become the biggest obstacle to growth. Thank you very much. This has been a very difficult video, by the way. Let me plug in a book promotion. This is probably the best uh, book on Turkish economy and politics in the market right now. Uh, you see the website where you can order it. I think now it's at 30% discount. So if you are interested in Turkey, please uh, do take a look at it. This has been another broadcast of Real Turkey Channel by host Atilla Shilada. I, I want to thank everyone who watches these videos. And I am deeply, deeply grateful for all the comments, whether they're positive or negative. I learn everything from a negative comment. I learn a new thing from every negative comment. Wish you well and wish you much health and prosperity. Bye-bye from Istanbul.